have made a rather impulsive decision. <laughs> oh, hi guys, I made a mess. And uh, yeah, spent the last couple days redoing my entire storage system, as you can see. And um, we got we got to get everything put back now. I have installed the new recategorizer system by Casildas, my good buddy Casildas from Mizuma Games. It's a new system that came out, and it's it's pretty darn cool the way the redstone works, and it's faster than the last one, and in hopefully it's less prone to um, me messing up uh, how it works. So uh, yeah, I, I was struggling with the last one. It kept breaking on me, and I kept having a hard time figuring out how to get it to work. Uh, right again, and uh, this one, it seems to be working. You can see I'm starting to sort some stuff as these lights are turning on, and I've got all the filters all set. I don't have every item in the game filtered just yet. Uh, once we start throwing in some of our random stuff here, we may find a few items I forgot, but we will get it sorted in due time. Anyway, <laughs> that was a big project, and I cannot wait to get all this stuff put back into the system and sorted to where it goes, because right now, as you can see, I'm in complete disarray, and uh, I, I'm not going to be able to do many projects today if I don't get it sorted. So that's what I'm going to spend some time doing right now. I'm going to start throwing all these boxes into the system, which is really cool. So you throw them in here, and then uh, once they get unloaded, we get empty boxes back in here. And uh, got some bulk storage on this one, which is nice. So we've got a bunch of the cobblestone and stone, and I got two more. I need to decide what I want to do for bulk storage on these two. I haven't made that decision just yet. But everything is being categorized, and it is, it's it's pretty cool, like I said. I'll put a link in the description for those of you that, that want into the technical details of how this works. But basically, a minecart gets loaded with whatever it is you're trying to sort. And then it drives by all these chests, and it figures out which one has the thing you're trying to sort in it. And it grabs it, and then it goes back around, and it sets the whole slice, letting it know that it's going to be dropping off items for that slice. And then it all kind of puts itself back together once uh, all the items are in place. Anyway, so you can see I've kind of like started off with some redstone stuff. I've got these. I've got some rails. I've got the dirt and grass and leaves and stuff. So I, I'm slowly but surely, you can see I'm missing flowers, but I'm slowly but surely filling out all these filters back here. And then we'll have every single item that's stackable anyway. The non-stackable items will end up at the end there. And we're going to put a device in that's special for those. I haven't done that yet. There's some extra little pieces to the system that just make it pretty cool that we have yet to do. But first things first, I'm putting all this stuff away. All right, I've chucked all my shulker boxes full of random stuff into the system, and it's going to take a while for it to sort it all out. You can see we're getting some deep slate in right now. Actually, I'm doing pretty well on deep slate. In fact, when we get full like this, I think I'm going to get some empty shulker boxes, pull them out, and then store those in here at the bottom one so that we have just full shulker boxes full of whatever it is and it's not taking up because we've only got five double chests worth of space and if those fill up all the way then the system basically will stop operating so we got to keep our eye on that it's got a cool detection on that though this light will just stay on if it gets full and the cart will just kind of stop and as soon as you empty it it gets going again so yeah there's a lot of little fail safe measures in place cast did an amazing job he's brilliant um, but now I think it's time that since that's all getting sorted, let's get this room put back together. You can see the sorting system is actually bigger than the last one. We've got a lot more categories that we can utilize. And in fact, all of these all the way down are nothing right now. So if we come up with new categories, we have the space for it, uh, which is good because, you know, as new versions of the game come out, sometimes new items come out. And, and I think uh, 1.20 is going to have a bunch of new stuff, too, that we're going to have to account for. So we have the space for that. But... I need to put the floor back together, and I wanted to make sure it stayed nice and bright in here. So I thought, what's something we can put down that's going to allow the light from these sea lanterns to shine through? And Joker boxes should do it. That should allow the light level to go through it and keep this room nice and bright. And with that, we can put in the rest of the floor. I think I want to kind of just mimic the same floor we had before. I really like that design. We're going to have to change it up a little bit because way more space now to fill. So luckily for me, we are sorting things out, which means I know where my stuff is. And I'm going to need some of these guys. I think I want to go with some stairs. I really like when we take stairs and we waterlog them. So I want to go around here. Now, it is a little bit rough of a transition from the cyan shulker boxes to the warped wood here. It's, it's kind of like blue versus green, at least the way I see it. Um, so I'm going to fix that by waterlogging it. I think that's going to help. 
with the water in there, that should take the more a little bit more blue into this space, and then it will kind of make sense that it transitions. And also, I think it's time for me to make a decision. I've been waffling on this a little bit, but this whole system, because of where it's getting loaded right here in our bulk storage, it pushed the entrance over a little bit and closed it off. Uh, so this used to be center right here, and you can see that's no longer the case. We would have to cut it down to a three wide and wall this off. And then we only have access from one side. The stairs over there kind of got demolished in the process. So it's kind of lopsided now. Like it used to, used to be able to come in and decide if you wanted to go right or left to get down to the storage. And I'm thinking about just getting rid of this altogether. Closing off this entire room, having it be like completely square, and then actually coming down with a bit of an elevator here, right in the middle instead of that staircase. So that's a huge change, which is why I've tried to waffle on it a little bit, why I try to give myself some time to think about it. But now that I'm putting it in the floor, I think I have to make a decision. And I'm honestly leaning towards the elevator. I, I don't know if it's going to work well. Like, I don't know exactly where this leads to right above me. I guess we could find out. All right, so the first thing I needed to do is find the center of the room because that's where we're going to want our elevator. And in doing so, I realized that we don't have a perfect square here, which is fine. Uh, it's a little bit longer this way. It's like 19 blocks long from the inside of these stairs versus 17 wide here. Um, so we've got a little bit of a rectangle, not much, but I think that is still absolutely fine. So now that we know where center is, if we're going to bring an elevator in, it would go right here. And the moment of truth, we're going to stack up and see what's above us. And hopefully it's nothing, not a big deal. It's just right kind of in the middle of the entrance here. We'll see, but this would be it. So this could kind of work out because we have the slabs here and it drops down. So you wouldn't even really see it. Uh, it's not exactly in the center between these lights, which is a little bit weird, but these could probably be moved as well. These are just for the floor be below it, I guess, and it brings some light up. So I could move these lights around a little bit to kind of make things symmetrical. And yeah, I think that will work out. So I think that's the new plan. We're going to get rid of these stairs and we'll just cover this up for now and block it all off. You won't even know it's missing, uh, except that my visitors that come through are probably going to be a little confused. So it might take Gem and Pearl and whoever else comes to visit me a little bit of time to figure out that I've made the change. Also, I just noticed this over here. What do we have? Show me the coolest thing you own from season nine. You may win a prize. Okay, so what's the coolest thing we own? You know, you would think that I was just putting away all my stuff. I would have come across something that would make me think, man, that is the coolest thing that we have. And that could go there and we could win some sort of prize. Um, but now I'm at a loss. I have no idea. Let's see. Some of our unstackable stuff is coming in here. Ooh, it looks like I missed magenta stained glass panes and some chiseled stone bricks and a couple flowers in the system, but we knew that. So anyway, all these items that are coming through should get put in the categorizer. And, uh, oh, that's named. That's why that didn't come through. I don't see anything fancy in here. What about in my bling box? Well, I mean, <laughs> we've got our two tall grass or tall grass, I guess. Uh, it's two blocks tall. We have our custom data model 40. Oh, I put that on there for, on purpose so I could remember how to generate these with our, our, our custom tags. Um, so we've got our beard as well. Also, I mean, not that I want to give this away, but this, this ax, this thing, this is pretty darn cool. I mean, that might be the coolest thing we own, that ax. But that means I would have to make another one because I'm not just going to give up mine. I think I might go with the beard. <laughs> Look how it looks on my hand. It looks like a little glove or something. <laughs> it's like not even the same size as when it's on your face. Uh, I don't think I'm going to give up the one I'm wearing, though. I think I will generate a new one using this custom data model command, and we will put that on there. And because carved pumpkin's not cool, we're going to go ahead and rename this to Impulse's Face Warmer. Oh, by the way, we have a little anvil dispenser right here, too. So this is pretty cool. If this anvil breaks, another one pops into place. And we got some backup ones here. You can see they're stacked up there. So we're going to be good on anvils for a while. Just another little embedded device tucked into the system. And there's more to come, like I mentioned before. So, all right, let's go pop this on this little display thing here and hope we win some sort of prize. That doesn't exactly fit inside the item frame, but we saw that when I was pranking gems. All right, back to business here. We're going to get this floor design done. And while we do that, let's take a quick commercial break.
Imagine paying full price for a gym membership and then being told you're only allowed to use the treadmill. You wouldn't put up with that, right? That's what a lot of services like Netflix are doing to you right now. There's a ton of content only available in certain regions of the world. For instance, The Office and Rick and Morty, they aren't available in the US, but they are if you're in the UK. But with ExpressVPN, you can unlock that content by connecting to a server in a different location and discover everything these services have to offer. Another advantage of ExpressVPN is that you can protect your online privacy and security with the world's leading virtual private network. With ExpressVPN, you can browse the web safely and securely with lightning fast speeds and unlimited bandwidth. Plus, with servers in over 90 countries, you can access your favorite content from anywhere in the world. So if you want to unlock region-based content while protecting yourself with the VPN I trust to keep me private online, consider trying ExpressVPN. And as a gift to all of you, my amazing viewers, you can get three months of ExpressVPN for free by visiting expressvpn.com slash impulse. I'll put a link in the description below so you can tap that and start protecting yourself today. Now, let's Let's get back to some Hermitcraft. Things are already looking so much better in the storage room. What a difference the floor makes. And we've got our old floor back, kind of the same palette, different pattern. I think it looks even better this time around. I'm going to say so myself. And this waterlogged stairs, um, it didn't do exactly what I was hoping it would do. I thought it was going to help with the transition from the blue to the green, but it actually kind of stuck out the blue even more. But it's okay. I think it's a nice little accent color around the edge of the room. And also, you probably noticed in the middle here, we've got our elevator that I talked about. And I did a little bit of redstone because I was trying to figure out, I wanted the bubbles still so you can kind of get in fast, get out fast. But um, I, I didn't want to do two different elevators. So I put in a block swapper. As soon as we press that button, it changed to soul sand, which means the bubbles will lift you up and out. And then after a couple seconds, it's just going to return right back to a downward elevator. So basically, anybody that wants to get in the room, it's always going to be ready to pull them down into it. And if you're ready to get out of the room, once we close all this up, you can just press the button and then get your way out. And of course, that means that I don't need the stairs anymore. And I went ahead and capped those off. And it looks nice and neat now. And I think this is the way to go. I moved these lights so they were symmetrical. A lot of stuff got done, and it's all coming together. Now, obviously, we've got a little more work to do. Got to get this roof done. Now that it's a little bit wider, got to come up with a, a new pattern for that, and I'll figure that out and figure out what to do with this space right here. And there's another mechanism that goes right here for, like, loading shulker boxes with unstackable items. I think I'm going to do that next because... I'm in the mood to do a little more redstone today. And there we go. We've added another piece to the system here at the end of the line. This one has the role of basically, instead of having all the items that didn't get sorted because they're either not stackable or because I haven't got to set in the actual filters for them yet, they will end up going into a shulker box if we wish instead of filling up all these chests. All we have to do is come over here and toggle this on. That light will turn on, letting us know that it is indeed going to start filling shulker boxes with all those goodies instead of them ending up there and we will leave that on now if anything comes in they'll end up in that shulker box if we do want to eject the shulker box because it's not full yet and it will auto eject once it's full but let's say we want it now you know we don't want to wait we can press that button and it will eject it and put it in the storage for us so um pretty cool pretty cool design save us some space if we got things coming through like you know armor or all that or, you know that kind of thing like weapons and just unstackable items they fill up the inventory pretty fast and we don't want that so instead they can sit inside of shulker boxes go back here I got myself a little maintenance door to get to the back there area and here we go here's all the redstone for that guy that was fun to put together a lot of cool stuff we got another item elevator and there's a shulker box loader stuck in there somewhere you can't really see it and then of course all the toggles for the modes you want to select so and this is how I will get to the filters in fact I didn't show you guys really how we set the filters I kind of showed you the back of one but I didn't really show you how we set it so let's grab a couple items out of here that need filtering I didn't know where tinted glass was when I was setting the glass filter and paper I guess I didn't have on hand either but you can see I got a book over there that feels like a good spot for the paper and then we'll of course use our glass row over there or column I should say so let's go back here and see if we can find it now I probably should have labeled the back area as well because when I come back here to set the filters I got to come through and basically look at the chest and tell and doesn't this one look so cool this one looks so cool in fact you can see right away I'm missing the block of raw iron and the block of raw gold so that'll eventually show up and I'll have to come back in and set those as well as the deep slate coal and the deep slate copper ore and the deep slate iron ore 
Uh, so, and if we get some deep slate emerald ore, that'd be pretty slick because that's pretty rare. But let's see here. This is where the book goes. So we'll put the paper in and you just want to grab that and we click that out. And that way, no change in signal happens. We just swap the shears out. And you know what? I've I've been, I don't have really any room for shears anywhere. So I've just been tossing them and letting them despawn. If we come back over here, we should be able to find our glass one. And I think it was about here. No, no, nope. I must have passed it. Yeah, I could probably use some signs for this place. All right, let's take our tinted glass and we will put it right there out of the way of all the colored glass. And you can see right away, I'm missing colors, right? That's how you can see. Uh, because it should be all of these colors all the way to here and then all of their glass pane equivalents so uh, but now we got that in so next time tinted glass come in the system or paper comes in the system it's going to get sorted properly instead of ending up at the end there and i'm gonna have the tedious task of just all the different items i haven't gotten to making sure i come back here and set those as i see them flow through but that's fine uh, because once it's done it's done and i will never have to worry about it again and i will never tear down my entire sorting system and rebuild it again because that took me a long time. I probably, I don't know, over 20 hours or so, but oh, it's so nice to see the lights turn on and just knowing and like, look at this. It's sorting two things at once. It's sorting some kind of lights over there and it's sorting some kind of dyes. Uh, here's black dye coming in and I don't know what we got in here, probably end rods or something like that. But it's kind of cool because this can process multiple sections at the same time. It's got parallelism or something like that. It's a fancy word for it does multiple things at the same time. It's very cool. So redoing my sorting system wasn't the only thing I got up to over the last week. In fact, I did also make some progress here in iBuy. You see, we're currently on the third floor, which if you remember, this floor was designed for Izuma to be able to come in and sell his goods out of. However, there's been a slight change of plans. Izuma, after taking a look at this and taking a look at what he wanted to do with redstone in his shop, uh, this space wasn't going to fit him and all his needs, so instead what I did was I went ahead and wired up the elevator to the fourth floor, and now he has the fourth floor all to himself, which means I get to take this floor and I can use this for selling things. So let's go on up to the fourth floor and where are my bubbles? Okay, sometimes it takes a little bit for the bubbles to form, and then we slowly make our way up here. Here we go. So I've got the elevator now so he can come up to the fourth floor. And uh, it looks like this is his stuff. I want kind of, I'm tempted to take a peek in here, but I don't want to give away any of his design ideas. So now Azuma is going to basically have this entire space right here to build and put redstone in and do whatever he wants. The only stipulation was, of course, the elevator has to stay there. And then there is a drop chute that goes there for the quick drop back down to the other floors. In fact, I also did finish off this little staircase. So once he has his floor in, we can use the staircase, say something happens to the elevator or, or you know, so maybe it's currently in use or something. But I've got that all wired up for him now and we can actually switch this back down to the second floor since the drop's not in. Or actually, um, the third floor. Yeah, let's go back down to the third floor and, and kind of take a look at this. So we can use this elevator both for going back down between floors if we don't want to go all the way down to floor one via the drop chute. So that's what I like about this elevator is we can have choices there. But yeah, now that Izuma's taken the fourth floor of this place, I've got this one all to myself, and uh, it's already been designed. The floor's in. It looks good, and I got to uh, figure out what I'm going to sell. So I think I'm going to keep chipping away at the industrial district, get some more goods going and farms and stuff. I'm looking forward to that. I've been having a lot of fun getting my hands back on redstone, uh, you know, because we did a lot of building early in the season, right? And so I like to mix it up and do a bunch of redstone as well. You guys know me. It's kind of my roots in, in Minecraft, so I always have fun doing that and farming and stuff. So we'll probably take a look back at the industrial district, see what other farms we could put in there and generate materials that maybe our server mates might need. And then we had a nice space to sell them out of. So looking forward to seeing what Azuma does up on the fourth floor. And then we've got three more floors to figure out what to do. And I'm kind of looking at this seventh floor thinking someday I might want to build myself a TCG arena because that seems to be pretty popular lately a lot of hermits are building arenas and uh, i you know i think tcg is going to be going on till the end of the, the season if not longer <laughs> we'll probably get the world download and, and play on it so i don't know anyway i think that's going to do it for me we've got a lot done in this episode that that redoing the sorting system took a ton of time and uh it, it actually did take us a, a stream also to hook up this elevator too so a lot of effort went into this video and i hope you guys did like it if you do 
or if you did, I should say, please hit the like button. And if you're not subscribed, make sure you do that before you go. But with that said, I will see you again next time. Have a good one, everyone.